Hello everyone, Catrice here and I welcome you to a rare new video. Today I want to show you just how fun customs can be, as you probably saw from the title. I've been for a few years part of a Yu-Gi-Oh! custom card server and just last night I had a very interesting, well, very fun match against someone. And I think I, I just wanted to share. So first up, let us look at the decks that were being played, because obviously with custom cards being around, um, there are some things I should probably say. First up, we both did not use our side decks, because he didn't build one yet, it was just a testing for whether the deck he was playing was actually functioning and mechanically uh, sound. I am playing what is called Aeon Breaker Idol Lesson, which I lessened being the, uh, the bigger part of the deck, with Arietta, Admira, and Devochi being the only ones this, and then some spell trap support. But I'll sh say more about that in the actual replay. Basically, the adolescent part is based on putting up the scales and doing some wacky shit with with those scales, be protected and actually swarming rather well. And then there's Aeon Breaker, uh, which has a few cards in here. <laughs> Some of them on our custom span list, actually. And uh, they are just a potent psychic fusion engine. So basically I just took two psychic decks and put them together, which in this server we're on, putting any psychic deck with uh, Aeon Breaker is actually pretty strong. <laughs> but yeah, this is the deck I was playing, and the deck my opponent was playing is a bit more complex, because as you can see, there's some different cards in there. <laughs> I will be not going too deep into the mechanics behind these cards. I can explain just a little bit when they're happening. Basically, there's pandemonium cards that are basically just trap pendulums. And there's drive monsters that have that can be revealed in the hand and have extra effects there. He's not using this deck, uh, deck list, that's my personal deck list, but you can expect shenanigans. Anyway. Let us just, oh no, Rombo. Let us just go into the first game. And first things first, opening hands all fine. Everything's, uh, everything's basically known to be correct. But first things first, my opponent is playing Solid Luna, which is also an archetype I have made. So I'm playing basically my cards against my cards. And he's, Solid Luna has the very fun part of uh, having all the pandemonium monsters also be hand threat, which in both of this case is not so relevant because you would need a card of the graveyard to do stuff. But <laughs> well, it's a thing. So the duel starts simple. I get my first turn, so I set up, I use the field spell, which sorry. The field spell has the its last effect is if I have no monsters I can summon an Arietta from a deck, which is the key card of the archetype. Because it can non once per turn if it's summoned place a scale from the extra deck, but only if this scale was face down first. And it's also a tuner, so I can go shenanigans there. So I go into the Arietta Fusion, uh, Arietta Synchro I mean, which allows me to summon one of the other uh, eggs from my extra deck by banishing another lesson from the graveyard. And Arietta, with the base Arietta Surge is a spell trap I'm being used as Synchro material, or as material, uh, as any kind of material for a fusion, including the contact fusions. Which is relevant because we have Contact Fusion here that uses Arietta and uh, any of the eggs. This is the white one, there's also a black one, but I rarely make the black one. The black one is a spell trap me game, so it's actually really good, but it didn't really matter here. And um, yeah, when white goes, I can summon one from the graveyard, and then when Idolest and Sunstress in white goes, I can scale one from the extra deck. So, just like this, I have a good setup with uh, Adolescent Encore giving me another body to make Jaden, which is the key card in all Aim Breaker and Psychic Strategies because it only uses any two Psychic Monsters and sets your Fusion spell from the deck, which I do here. Honestly, uh, that's a big misplay from Neo, my opponent here, was not imp uh, using his Imperm on Jaden, since that would have. Uh, ended my turn right there. I would've just set those two cards, which both of them actually don't really do anything. 
in this scenario, because this is just uh, scale swapping, and this is uh, just good if I already have fusion on board. So he allowed me to get Nova, and then decided to imperm Nova's recovery effect, which is basically setting my fusion for the graveyard. Fusion cycles itself back by putting a um, psychic monster in my hand, and I go for Boros, uh, Boros Savage Dragon, and this is basically my board. It's just a monster negate, a, an omni negate, two sets that don't do anything, this is protected by all three of these. This, pr this protects from battle destruction, no, card effect destruction, this protects from battle destruction, and this protects from targeting, but only on adolescent monsters, so this card is the only thing currently protected. So my opponent starts, and uh, <laughs> it starts with me getting my standby phase effects. Now this is where a bug comes in, which was just testing wise. He used all the range effect, which if a monster effect is, or rather if an effect is activated, I think it was. Oh yeah, if a monster effect is activated, she can discard himself to search a drive monster, but somehow it was scripted to search any card. I didn't script them. And then engage the drive monster, which is part of the mechanic. But he just chose to add the spell, which he didn't know wasn't possible, because, well, simulators, am I right? So I get to add one monster to my hand and deal some damage. He uses Proxima Synchron to set a Pandemonium from his deck, which is Melveth. Melveth being able to lock out the entire graveyard when she summons herself. Like, all of the uh, Pandemoniums have the effect, but if they uh, activate as a trap, they can target one monster on the field, graveyard, or the other one is from Banished. Which is Balthus. Where's Balthus? Oh, Balthus is. Oh, there's Balthus. A banished. Equip that to them and they special summon themselves. And Other Rain negates the effects of monsters with the same name as equipped to him. So basically, Millennium Eyes. This is a Dweller, and this is just a. Uh, I think it was Mind Drain which restricts hand effects. But this basically restricts hand effects. And the Drive monsters are there to basically uh, swap around, so they. Use the, uh, the second drive effect to put the pandemonium monster back in my spell trap zone, set up uh, face down, and special summon my monster that it was equipped. This is basically the main gimmick. Now he's he was engaging Sistina and using her pop effect, which if this card becomes engaged, you can target one card of a field, destroy it, and if you do, you can set you can set one solid Luna pandemonium monster from the graveyard. He could have set Alvarain, he decided not to. Oh no, he did. He did set another array. And popped my never-ending adolescent concert. But then he activated Assassination, which drops the energy, which is the which is this thing over here. By free to pop a card, which also uh, drains them completely. I obviously negate that he gets to draw a card by shuffling her back, which is a good effect. And then I use my hand trap to set a trap, which I can also activate that turn, which is basically the devotee's effect. He then st tries to steal my Savage Dragon, but I just Zephyr, Zephyr War it. Resetting this, so I have it back for next turn. Then he goes to set my graveyard up, and <laughs> actually this is where stuff becomes interesting. Because he had the field spell, which uh, lets him activate traps for turn if they're set, and also can target a monster and uh, put the engaged monster's energy, uh, increase the engaged monster's energy by its level. He was able to increase Sestina's energy to 7, which equals her level, so that way he can drive summon her, which is what the mechanic is about. And she bur and on drive summon, she destroys all spells to trap Psycho Troll, burns me for the, uh, for the same amount, times 300. Which actually gets a lot of my uh, floats going, except this one is negated. This one floated to this, this one add an air breaker monster to my head, but it gets negated by Melveth because she is equipped with Nova. <laughs> so yeah, a lot more stuff in series with a lot more um, like cycling through cards, pandemonium summoning to add a drive monster and do all kinds of good shit. Like you can see just um, the amount of. Um, Interaction that's actually going on from him and from me Which is why I wanted to show this duel specifically like he's trying to get rid of my entire board Sadly, he only has one link monster in his graveyard So he had to decide which to destroy and he made the wrong decision 
He popped Arietta, which, if I have no monsters, I can use Never Ending Adolescent Concert in my graveyard to summon another Arietta from my deck. Which then, unfortunately, cannot complete my scale because I both my whites are face up and she can only set face down. But black still protects from battle destruction, so I live another turn, get to burn for 600, Encore draws me two cards, which also happen to be the most insane two cards I could have drawn. Get Leisha, get back to my fusion spell, summon a fusion and go absolutely cray cray until he stops me by getting my Jaden. But haha, I don't really care about that anymore. I just go into Appaloosa, this pops a card, this sets up my scale back, so I can go and build more damage up. I built a raw Borrow load, mainly because I just wanted the, de uh, the attack points to attack over Balthus. I go for this, and with no cards left in his hand, he draws a card that is actually Vesper, which is a great card. He knows how it's it, wants to use its effect to set a uh, quick spell, no fangs. Get to draw a card, draw the worst card to draw there, and had to pass. <laughs> like, that was, just in this game, there was already a ton of interaction. And then there's game two, which again, he opens two lands here, which again, we did not side. That's his main, that's in his main deck. And uh, I actually want to banish a lot. So this actually hurts me a lot. I, he, I go second, he sets two cards, and honestly, set two pass with Solid Luna is pretty decent, especially with Melveth shutting down the graveyard. This would definitely, like, Melveth Lancia definitely would shut down any player I've had. But yeah, I discard a Adolescent card to summon Admirer, which then searches Arietta. He activates Lancia and then Impermanence, and I'm just like, okay. But Solid Luna's main purpose is to do stuff if I do stuff. So honestly, I just end my turn. He draws with his second Sestina, engages one of them to pop my card, and ends his turn. And at this point, I'm really just like, oh god, second Lancia. Okay, I'm gonna just swap my admirer to attack position and attack him, because if I don't do stuff, he can't do stuff. And then he draws one of the best cards in the deck, which is Progression via Automation. Searching in a hyperdrive to uh, while discarding. And now his automation combo comes in, which is insane. Also, my cards obviously, so I knew it, but then I also know how to just how to stop the combo. With this he could have drawn an additional card for a drive effect, so I didn't want it to want him to do that because I knew he was bricked. Okay, he goes on, makes it Mascarina. That's my admirer, so he has something for next turn. But again, Deep Lake Adolescent Refrain protects my Arietta from being destroyed by battle, so he cannot really do anything. So I draw for turn, I burn it for 500. I use Composing the Adolescent Harmony to, uh, to throw out my Refrain and destroy his Mercurial Hyperdrive, which he changed to have the card uh, engaged. He does destroy my Arietta, but I can summon her back with Encore. And he did a crucial mistake of not using IP Mascarena when I had two monsters on board. Because I could have just. I just used my normal uh, uh, Arietta and my Pure White to make a monster negate. So, so his Mascarena is now de basically dead, and I still have my Deep Black Adolescent Refrain. Now she allows me to go back for uh, Arietta while searching a second Encore. And now I also have my scales set up because he actually uh, activated his Masquerina so I could pop one of my scales. Which then, that misplay, like that, that chain of events basically made me uh, go overdrive and yeah, that, that basically killed him here. Because I knew he, he couldn't have anything because he has no pandemonium set and the dry so alone on head will not really do anything for him. I just end on two monster negates which is good enough and an encore. Burn him for 700 and heal for 700 so I can get back my hand trap so I can set my Zephyr War in this turn. He tries to summo to do it by getting a Tornado Dragon on board. So, the fun thing is, he wanted to just get Zeus on there. Which still would have done, would have lost her. Reese, so I'm uh, pure white. But since my field spell uh, buffs me by 100 per card on board if I have white and debuffs the opponent for 100 per card on board if I have black. I could have, I could just 
Just about these effects, set a card. He didn't decide to pop a card, so uh, yeah. You just die to attacking into my free knife here right now as a crescendo. Which to be fair, honestly this game too was riddled by misplays on Neo's part with Solid Luna, which is obviously a very new archetype on his server and he doesn't really know what to, how to play them yet. But the interactions of game 1 were so interesting I just had to show them. And like, personally, personally speaking, after years of being part of the uh, custom server and having my drive mechanic approved, which I might go more in depth on if someone's interested. This is just way too interesting. It's, like, it's way too much fun to play customs when the TCG format is not up to par. And I just wanted to share this feeling with you guys and maybe make you interested in trying some customs yourselves. If you do, I'm going to leave a uh, link to the Discord server, which we're playing on, in the description. And uh, yeah. Maybe I grab one or two people here and make them interested in customs. Because I sure am more interested in customs than in the actual game right now. So, please go ahead, join our chaos and next time I might show a more simple replay and go more in depth about what to do. I did this for the first time and I kind of don't know what I'm doing yet, but if you have any um, advice for me on how to go forward with my custom stuff, or rather my, or rather my uh, content with customs related, which honestly I want to push a little more, then please go ahead, shoot a, uh, shoot a comment, or hit me up on wherever you know me. We can make stuff happen. But for now, this has been Architrius, and I hope you guys stay ravened.